on this one. Okay, so we have x times 3x minus 1 equals 14. And I've seen for a lot of times you'll get the urge to just set both of those to zero. That only works if it's equal to zero. That's why you couldn't just do that right from the beginning. Okay, so you want to go ahead and distribute that x. x times 3x is 3x squared. x times negative 1, you can put negative x or negative 1x, whichever one you like, equals 14. Okay, so now if we subtract 14 from both sides, that's 3x squared minus x minus 14 equals zero. Okay. Now we can't factor out anything to get the x squared by itself, so we're kind of stuck using the a times c method. Okay, so we know for this one, our a is equal to three. Our b is equal to negative one. And our C is equal to negative 14, which means that our A times C is 3 times negative 14, which is negative 42. Give me a little more room there. So that means we have to find two numbers that multiply to equal our negative 42. And those same two numbers add to equal our b, which is negative 1. Okay, so for negative 42, well, for 42, you have 42 and 1. You have 21 times 2. You have 7 times 6, which looks like that one should work. So 7 times 6 is 42. This is negative, so you know one of them has to be negative, one has to be positive. By this being negative, you know the largest number is going to be negative. So you have negative 7 times 6, and negative 7 plus 6. Okay, So we see that works for both. Okay, And once we do that in the A times C method, we're just going to replace our B term. So you're going to replace negative x or negative 1x, whichever way you wanted to write it. So that means this, we're going to rewrite it as 3x squared minus 7x plus 6x. Minus 14 equals 0. So now once we have those four terms, we do our factor by grouping. Which means we break those down to two little subgroups. Okay. So for this, these two terms, we can factor out an x. That's about all they have in common. x times 3x will give us our 3x squared. And x times negative 7 would give us our negative 7x. Now for these two, we can factor out a 2. That's the most you can factor out of those two numbers. Okay. So 2 times 3x will give us our 6x. And 2 times negative 7 will give us our negative 14. And we know that's equal to zero. So we're looking for our matching binomials, which we have them. So we can just factor those right out to the front. So you have 3x minus 7. And you can cross them out if you want to. And whatever's left goes into the other parentheses. So that leaves us with x plus 2. equals zero. Okay. 
So the hard part's over. Now we just set both to zero. Okay, so that means 3x minus 7 can equal 0, or x plus 2 can equal 0. So if we add 7 to both sides and divide by 3, you have x equals 7 over 3, or subtract 2 from both sides, x equals negative 2. And either one of those would make that one work. Any questions on that one? All right, I'll leave that up for a few more seconds. If you can factor out a greatest common factor to where there's nothing in front of that x squared or a squared, mm -hmm. then you don't have to worry about the a times c method. Okay. But whenever you have something in front of that x squared or a squared or whichever that lead variable, mm -hmm. then you have to use the a times c method. Okay, so let's say for example, say for the function, f of x equals 18x squared plus 15x. Let me make that look more like a 1. Fifteen x minus ten. Okay, we're going to use the fact that f of x equals fifteen to find two points that lie on the graph of the function. First thing you want to notice on this one is the fact that it says f of x is equal to 15. When you see f of x is equal to 15, you literally just replace f of x with 15. That's, that's your first step. So you're going to replace f of x with 15 and put into standard form. Okay. So instead of f of x equals 18x squared plus 15x minus 10, we're going to end up with 15 equals 18x squared plus 15x minus 10. By putting it to standard form, we're just going to make it equal zero. So that means we subtract 15 from both sides. Okay. 
Okay, so if we subtract 15 from both sides, let's clean that up some. So minus 15, that just becomes zero. So we end up with 18x squared plus 15x. I'm just gonna switch it around. Negative or well, minus 10 minus 15 is minus 25 equals zero. Now, normally when you get numbers like that, you can sort of factor out something and make it a little bit smaller. With these, you can't make it any smaller. So every once in a while, you'll run into numbers that you can't make any smaller. So solve using the A times C method, where in this case, your A is equal to 18, your B is equal to 15, and your C is equal to negative 25. So that means your A times C it's going to be 18 times negative 25, which is negative 450. Okay. So that means we have to find two numbers that multiply to equal your A times C. And those same two numbers add to equal your B which is 15. Okay. Now to figure this out, you can kind of look at your factors of 450. Okay. We know we have 450 times one. We know I have 18 and 25. But if we add those together, if we made one positive and one negative, we wouldn't get negative 18, I mean positive 15. But we also have 30 times 15. Where we know one has to be positive and one has to be negative, but the largest number is positive. So we know that 30 times negative 15 would work for both of them. So we know with the A times C method, we're going to replace our 15x. Replace 15x. Okay. So that means this is now going to become 18x squared plus 30x minus 15x. Minus 25 equals zero. Okay, so now we factor by grouping. Factor by grouping. Okay, so when we factor by grouping, we take the four terms and we make two little smaller groups. Now, for these two terms, you can factor out a 6x. So you have 6x. Now, 6x times 3x will give us our 18x squared. And 6x times 5 will give us our 30x. Now, for these two terms, we can factor out a negative 5. So negative 5 times 3x will give us our 15, negative 15x. And negative 5 times positive 5 gives us negative 25. 
and we know that's going to equal zero. Okay, so just like before, we were looking for our matching binomials, so we know we can factor that right out. So you have 3x minus 5, and whatever's left goes into the other polynomial. So you have 6x minus 5, and we know that's equal to 0. Okay, so we factored our left side, and we got 3x minus 5 times 6x minus 5 equals 0. Now once we have it factored, we just set both to 0. Move that up a little bit. So that means 3x minus 5 can equal 0, or 6x minus 5 can equal 0. Okay, so on the first one, if we add 5 to both sides and divide it by 3, we get x equals, oh, that should be plus 5, sorry about that. Okay, so that should be negative 5 over 3, because we're going to subtract 5 from both sides. Okay. 